If you have your Bibles, I'm going to go to one scripture in Psalms 18 and verse 33. It's a lot in there in that song of David, but I'm going to just go right to that one. 18th Psalms in verse 33, and then we're going to jump over to the book of Habakkuk. It's in the Old Testament, and we'll just work our way through Habakkuk and come there to the end. But Psalms 13 and Psalms 18, I'm sorry, in verse 33. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Bible, and it just makes it brighter and makes it set up the lesson that we're going to talk about tonight. He says, He makes my feet like hinds feet, able to stand firmly and tread safely on paths of testing and trouble. He sets me securely upon my high places. Look at somebody as you raise your hand, tell them, this is my high places. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all hands are higher than others. Y'all going, y'all really going up. Okay. Yeah. But it's a, it's a strange thing how God knows where each of us are, are at and he understands our elevated place. Um, someone said, never um, be jealous of someone for what they have, but ask them what did they have to go through to get it before you become so offensive about they don't deserve that. But ask them what did they have to go, have to go through to get it, to get to that high place. Um, the psalmist is pretty much telling us here that God doesn't promise us to, that he would eliminate challenges. Instead, he promises us to give us the strength to meet those challenges, in which David talks about throughout that Psalms 18. Beautiful Psalms to read if you get home this evening or sometime this week. Just read that whole Psalms of David. And he also says, the psalmist is teaching us here in this lesson, that, that, that he gave, gave us, he gives us, if he doesn't give us any rough roads to walk, no mountains to climb, uh, the path, no path to elevation, no battles to fight, then we won't grow. You have to go through something to grow. I, I know we grew up in the song, uh, we grew up in the church, Lord, don't move this mountain, give me the strength to climb it, um, on and on. Or you can speak to the mountain and it shall be removed. But there are some mountains that are for your training. And there are some things you have to go through for your strengthening and for your elevating elevation. But God, he does not leave us with these challenges by ourselves. Instead, he comes alongside us and teaches us and strengthens us as we face them. We're not facing them by ourselves. High places are a position or the place of power of influence. Say position, power, influence. Those are high places where God will raise us up to. Our subject we're working off tonight is that I'm created to walk in high places. I was created to walk in high places. Psalms 1833, and we're moving on. The book of Habakkuk, if you can find your way over to there, if you, if you find that text of scripture, the first chapter, I'm going to work through the second chapter a little bit and then go to the third chapter. Habakkuk, again, is in the Old Testament, and Habakkuk's name means embracer, and here he is um, um, a part of pronouncing the destruction of the Chaldeans that's coming upon the Jews. He's opening up these three little books that he's writing out of, and he's talking about how in the midst of this uh, captivity that is coming, uh, noticeable facts are occurring within this book. Habakkuk, in all three chapters, is breathing the spirit of prayer, and we're dealing with victory in prayer and created for uh, elevation or for higher heights. He's breathing a spirit of prayer and expresses his holy indignation even towards God's people as they are worried, they are waywardly going against God. He is expressing his heart filled towards them, but also he's talking to God about the condition that they, that they are in. Um, I'm created to walk on high places. In Habakkuk, the first chapter, verse 1, you see his prayers, it begins with the burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. He's one of the minor prophets, but he's speaking about the burden because God's people are not in their high place. They are now looking at going through a hard, challenging time of captivity. Habakkuk, the first chapter, the embracer, verse 2. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And you will not hear or even cry out to you violence and you will not save. He's, he's crying out in prayer, 
asking God to change the narrative of what he's looking at here. And the Lord is not answering just yet. Back at the first chapter, verse 3, he says, Why do you show me indignation and cause me to see trouble? Verse 4, For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention is arising. You see, hatred and you see the spirit of discouragement are the disgracement amongst God's people. It goes on and talks about the, the law that's not having any effect within the people's lives. There's no justice taking place. The wicked are, are surrendering to righteousness. Therefore, preserve the just, the, per, preserve, I'm sorry, judgment. And uh, per, per, because the wicked are not walking right, and the, the, because the righteous are walking in wickedness, we surrender to righteousness. He said, therefore, preserve, pers, perverse judgment proceeds. That's in the fourth verse of Habakkuk, the first chapter. Judgment cannot uh, take place in righteousness because wickedness is over, overriding that. His prayer is what I want you to see and his cry out to God. In verse 2, Habakkuk, of that first chapter, he's questioning uh, uh, God. And he's, he's just mentioning here to God that if, God, why don't you do something about this evil that's taking place and why don't you fix it? Have you ever been there where things have got so bad and you look like, God, why don't you do something about this? And it's not that God can't do anything about it, but his, his mercy is just withheld for the moment before he launches his judgment upon it. He says, God here, um, in, this, in this context, God is, 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 is looking at Habakkuk and talking to him about the evil that is going on, the perverse judgment in verse 4, the results when evil men control justice systems and overturn righteous decisions in Habakkuk 1 in verse 4. God is here speaking to the prophet, of, of the prophet is speaking to God about this violence. And in the first chapter of Habakkuk, in verse 12, God answers him, but not the way he wants to see God answer. He says, how can God, Habakkuk comes back, so how can God use cruel, in, inventing, invading armies like the Chaldeans to solve and inter, internal problems among God's people? So he's praying for God to bring about justice and fix this matter. And God's going to raise up the child demons. He's going to raise up an outside force because God can't do it himself because God is just and merciful. And Rebecca is saying, well, I didn't mean to pray for you to bring trouble up on the people because I'm down there with them also. So God's nature cannot uh, allow him to be evil. He has to bring up a Chaldean army. He said, uh, who, can, how can, who can hold, who cannot hold their tongue when wicked devices is of a person's more righteous than he? In the 13th verse of the first chapter, he says that, then how are you going to take somebody more wicked than we are and use them to straighten us out? He said, I don't understand what you're doing, God. I'm praying for recovery, but you're bringing up this army of this, these Chaldeans. He said, it doesn't, it doesn't measure out. Rebecca could, could, couldn't comprehend the evil nation harming a less evil nation. So he, he puts them in the category of fish, and that's in the 14th verse. And he talks about fish and animals killing each other. And it, it, this is something that he's beginning to think about. This is something that happens in, in, wild, in the wild. But you're about to bring these Babylonians and these Chaldeans to come up against your people to conquer us. Am I going too, too deep? Are you tracking with me? You tracking with me? Okay. He says, so the prophet begins to see this. And he says that, God, you have to change the story and let it become a better ending for us. So in the second chapter in Abeka, and verse 1 to 3, he says, you know what? I'm just going to stand up on my watch. I'm going to keep praying and see for myself I'm in, this, in, this rump, in this rump part, in this high tower, and watch and see what, the, what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Because he you knows God's going to answer him because he's asking God to do this, but not with this, these child names. Then the Lord, in Habakkuk 2 and 3, the Lord answered and said, write the vision and make it plain on tables that he may run who reads it. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So I'm going to give you instructions, Habakkuk. 
and I want you to stand on your watch. I want you to position yourself before God, enabling to hear his voice. That's your first point. Stand and position yourself to watch and see what God will say. I said, meeting the Lord in a regular place is where you stand before the Lord in prayer. He goes on in that same scripture, he says, watch and see. He says, you have to watch and see. In other words, I'm going to send you visions and dreams of what I'm getting ready to do. Something's going to start moving within you of what I'm getting ready to do. It's not just a myth. It's not something you ate. I'm going to show you some dreams and vision of how I'm going to move. And, and it said, he said, when you do that, he said, he said, then make sure you stand and wait to see what I will say. That means you got to get into your word and read the word of God and see what the Lord is saying back to you. So I'm tracking with Habakkuk because this judgment is coming. Then I want you to write the vision and make it plain. Start journaling down what the Lord is speaking to your spirit in dreams and vision. I'm really going too fast. I may be going too fast. But, he said, but, but know this for sure. Surely it's going to come to pass. What I said is going to happen. But you wait on God and, and make sure that you do not lose heart because the just shall live by faith. By faith in God is seen throughout the New Testament, shall live or stand or stay alive and be preserved and will flourish by faith. It is going to be the faith when things are getting rocky and looking crazy. It's the faith of the church that's going to make sure that we stand by faith. By faith here is the great principle of Christians of all ages. Hebrews 6 and 11 and 6 says that is without faith it is impossible to please God. And he that comes to God must believe that he is and a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So Habakkuk in this context is looking at faith now. Everything is out of order in the second chapter. He sees all these woes that is about to happen. But he knows that he was created to walk on high places because God is the one that's going to elevate him to that place. Um, so many things happen in the last years that churches close up, but we were in mountaintop. Yes, yes. And so our faith had to come up when things was closing up. People that you know personally, lives went to shambles. But when their lives were falling apart, your faith had to come up because you were created to walk on high places. God did not save you to leave you in a place of ruin and destruction. That's why he puts you in a place to have to go through mountains and go through some trials and go through some difficult times so you know how to walk on your high places. Raise your right hand. I'm about to close. Say, I was created to walk on high places. The scene I laid out for you was the bad picture of what was coming upon God's people. The present scene I'm breaking through is Habakkuk still on this tower praying, I'm going to stay on my watch. See, I'm going to stay on my watch. I know you said it hasn't happened yet, but I'm going to keep staying on my watch, get up every morning, not the watch of my clock, but the watching for God to come and do what he said, because he was not going to leave me in this barren place. The prophet here, Habakkuk, which this scripture is seen in uh, the gesture live by faith is seen in Romans 1 and 17. It's also seen in Galatians 3 and 11. And it's also seen in, in Hebrews 10 and 32. The just shall live by faith. So God wanted us to catch this word to know that it's going to be by faith that we're going to live. Here we go. So in the third chapter of Habakkuk, the prophet here now is breathing more of his prayer. And he is describing the woes of God for his people and time passed and how God inspired the godly among the people that gave them confidence even in the midst of the calamities to trust God. He goes in this third chapter and just in verse two and three particularly, he says, oh Lord, I've heard of your speech and was afraid. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year, make known in wrath, remember mercy. I think I brought the scripture up a few weeks ago. So his prayer now is, I heard what you get ready to do. And I see that the Chaldeans are ready to pounce. But I'm praying for my watchtower to see if this vision of what you're promising me is going to come to pass. Because I don't see a vision of destruction. I see a vision of progress. So Lord, I've heard of this, but... I'm praying this prayer in the midst of the years 
are in the midst of the destruction that's taking place, right in the middle of what's happening all around us. In your wrath, remember mercy. I want you to revive the work of your hand, even though it doesn't seem possible when everything seemingly has come crumbling and falling apart, I'm going to pray a prayer that in the middle of it, you revive us. That you show the world, I'm not through with my people. I still got a plan for everyone's life. Oh Lord, revive the work. Revive us. Make us new. Repeatedly do this over and over again. In the middle of the wrath that's taking place, show mercy to us. Show me mercy. I want to see your loving kindness. And nobody else is praying this prayer, but the preacher is praying, Lord. I know I'm just kidding with y'all. Lord, show me some mercy. Because if you're passing judgment like this, don't seem like mercy is nowhere in town. But Habakkuk got the praying. I'm praying for some mercy. And I believe God's going to show up and show it out. Mercy is God's loving kindness. It is his compassion. It is his favor. It's his approval and support and compassion because his compassion fails not. He says, in the middle of all of this, show me some mercy. Now, where did God come from? Glad you asked. Habakkuk, the third chapter in verse four. God came from Tema. God comes from the south and steps on the scene and shows up in a theophany. And he begins to show his greatness and his presence, just like he does in our services sometimes, that God shows up and you see the spirit of God gets real high. Because it's with inside of us when we come in, but you start releasing it out in your presence and God shows up. I, I got to close here in five minutes, but how many want God to show up tonight for believing? It don't take long for him to show up. You want me to show you how easy it is for him to show up? Breathe out. Breathe in. God's like air. He's everywhere. He can show up anytime. You miss that one. You're getting he can show up anytime he want to, but he can't show up in doubt and disbelief. But if you start believing for God to show up, it'll come like a wave over this whole church. So God comes from Tema, and the Bible says in Habakkuk 3 and 4, the earth was filled with his praise. Whenever the Lord shows up in the house, you cannot sit silently with your praise. Whenever he shows up in your house, you cannot sit silently in your praise. When he shows up, he wants to be praised. He likes to be bragged on. He likes to be talked about. He likes to be stroked. He dwells in the midst of praise. Now, here we are in the effects of this prayer of Habakkuk, speaking out of his own feelings because things as in between those verses are not as he expected. Habakkuk begins to get into his feelings, and he speaks also the feelings of the people. In the third chapter, in verse 16, when I heard my body trembled, I saw these wolves that are about to come. My body trembled, my lip quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I myself rest in the day of trouble, that I might have rest in the day of trouble. Keep in mind with me, class, that Habakkuk's in a prayer meeting, and his prayer meeting is leading him to trust God in a high tower. Now he's looking for God to show up any place, any time, but he needs him right now to revive the work in the midst of the year. Let me help you out. Have you ever been in prayer, and your prayer went from a solemn prayer to an accessory prayer to a groaning prayer to a prostrate prayer, where God lays you out on the floor because you stayed in there so long and he started pulling you into the upper room of the throne seat above the mercy seat. Now, it's not just a common prayer talking to God. Habakkuk now is on the floor and saying, God, you got to do something here. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I need you to turn it to our favor. He's on the floor praying that God would give him rest in the day of trouble. Have you ever been there where you needed God to just give you a break? Lord, I'm tired of this drama. I'm tired of this trial. Every day I wake up up like it ain't ending at all but if you can just give me a break in the midst of this trouble I'll be all right shut this enemy up just for a couple of hours and I'll be all right this was the same expression of the people of God but Habakkuk was speaking for them what was he saying in this prayer from this prayer he gathered a song of faith 
And the song of faith is in the third chapter in verse 17. He triumphs in faith. We talked about that faith. The manifestation of the outbreak was everywhere. But the prophets are declaring the confidence in God and embracing this faith with laughter, knowing that with God, even the impossible things will give you joy in the midst of tribulation. He begins to pray this prayer. Watch what he says. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olives may fail, and the field yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herb in the stall, yet I will rejoice. Can I run tonight just for a moment? I don't see nothing changing around me and people don't seem like they're getting any closer to you, but I'm going to still trust you by faith. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Maybe just talking to yourself, boy. I am going to still thank God because the picture may look dim to you, but it looks bright to me because my faith has connected me back to God, knowing that it's going to end the way he says it's going to end. I'm still on my high tower and I'm looking to see what he will say to me and what I'm going to answer what I'm going to answer when he speaks to me but I know he's going to speak Lord I've heard of your wrath but in it you're going to remember mercy now nothing seems to be growing on the field or in the stall bank accounts are getting more leaner finances are getting more tighter but yet I'm still going to praise nothing makes the devil more upset that when there's nothing going your way and you come to church and dare to give God some praise it's nothing makes him more upset when you at home facing all that you're going through and you're determining yourself yet I will rejoice I need somebody to get a yet rejoice praise in this house I will rejoice I will rejoice mm. he knew what was taking place look at somebody if you're keeping up with me say I see what's happening I see where he's going well keep tracking you'll get there in a minute he says I'm going to rejoice you heard it like this don't wait till the battle is over so he realized, I'm not waiting for God to fix it. I see it coming because God is already on my side. He was created to walk in high places by the Lord God Almighty. He said the Lord God Almighty is his strength. He is the substratum that holds him up. He is the firm one that keeps him stable no matter what he's going through. He says to us in verse 19, as I close, he makes my feet like hind's feet. How in the world does God put hind's feet on my feet? You're in something you were not born with, but God said you're going to need this because you're going to be walking in a place of influence, a place of power, and a place of strength. So I'm going to have to make sure when you get there, I don't want you slipping back off the mountain. I'm going to make your feet like hinds feet i'm gonna make sure you are in a sure footed place the hind the hind the hind the female hind is a red deer whose home is in the mountains somebody say mountains see when he told me this tonight he said clinton i had to make your feet like hinds feet because you are not going to be living in a valley you're going to be a mountain dweller anytime you know that god has given you influence you don't hang in the valley of despair too long and he puts you in a place where your feet are designed to climb excuse me tonight i've been fasting so i'm a little hot he said your feet's going to be like hind feet mountain climbers i need mountain climbers say here i am he said, your mountain climbers go up and down, this deer does, up and down the mountain. This hind goes up and down the mountains. Uh, this is something amazing as you look at this. As I asked the Lord, then what's the danger of the deer? The danger of the deer is a mountain lion and humankind. Humans can be very treacherous in themselves. But here the mountain lion is running at 40 to 50 miles an hour. But God put this hind in the mountains. He was created to go to high places. And this deer is able to outrun the mountain lions. We're able to maneuver past the roaring lion, which is the devil. God puts you in a position where you're not gonna get caught or ate up. I'm gonna tell you how to maneuver and to move. This deer is so unique that when she goes up the mountains, the synergy of her back feet goes into the same space of her front feet. If her front paw hits here, the back paw comes into that same space where she never lose track of her footing. Whatever she's moving to, her back legs support her to go going forward. Your problem is that you're not walking right or holding a sure footage. You're walking in somebody else's footsteps and not walking in what God gave you. He said, your 
feet will be designed for you to walk in your feet and climb the mountains I put you on. So when you go up the mountains, you got sure footage. When you come down the mountain, you got sure footage. Whatever you are going through, I'll give you sure footage. No matter where the enemy is trying to hunt you at, you're going to say, I'm about to escape, devil. This is your last time. You better do what you got to do because I'm not going to be here long. I will have you jumping around and moving to the place of elevation. Anytime the enemy comes and spooks you, you tell him thank you because I'm only going higher. Because the only thing you can do is push me up because you're not going to bring me down. Habakkuk knew the short footedness that God would give him. He knew that this deer was an image of what God was going to take him to. Hind feet for high places. Hind feet for high places position a place of power and influence. Hind feet means that my feet are set firm. I'm solid in my faith. I'm strong in my conviction. I'm not weary or weary and well doing. I know where I'm going and who I'm going there with. I'm not walking your trail. I'm walking my path. And my path leads to faith to faith and glory to glory because he did not birth me with feet but he created feet on me to make sure my faith would not slip off. It's something you were not born with I told you because I see where you're going so I gotta create something different in you so you don't fall back to lowly bar. You got to keep going up to where I want you to go. That's why you're short footed. You can't walk with everybody and everybody's steps. Let me help you out. The only reason you're in it tonight because God made your feet like hinds feet. The only reason you can't be moving because God made your feet like hinds feet. The only reason you're not falling back because God gave you sure footed. Whatever the enemy throw at you, it could not overtake you because God was bringing you up every time higher and and higher and higher so I will rejoice I will joy in my God I see my destiny I know where I'm going I will stand before kings and princes I will walk in the house of the Lord with my head held high I will not have my head looking down I was born for high places been in the valley too long too long I was born to rise above poverty above lack above doubt above fear. I was born to walk in high places. Excuse me for a moment. I want to go to a high place. Where are you going preacher? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Tell your neighbor everybody can't come up here but God gave me the elevated place to dwell in the secret place of the most high above where the devil can't get to you. Above where evil can't get to you. Above only and not beneath give God some praise in this place look at two people that watch me go up watch me watch me